Hello, uh, this is John Boyne. I'm the author of the wartime stories The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas, Stay Where You Are and Then Leave, and my new novel The Boy at the Top of the Mountain, which is published this October. Like the earlier book, this is set during the Second World War. It tells the story of Piero, a young French orphan who goes to live at the Berghof, Adolf Hitler's mountaintop retreat. Thanks to everybody who's used The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas and Stay Where You Are in schools over the years to discuss the Second and the First World War. I hope you find this one as much of interest. It's really about brainwashing and how easy it is to be indoctrinated into something so terrible. When I'm researching a novel, what I start with is firstly novels written at the time in order to get the sense of idiom and language that was used. Non-fiction, memoirs, biographies, autobiographies, anything I can get my hands on. Travel is important. For this novel, The Boy at the Top of the Mountain, I travelled to the Berghof. I travelled to the very top of that mountain to see where Piero might have lived and where Hitler did live. But at some point, you have to put all that research aside and you have to focus on the characters, on the story, and just write it. The two boys at the centre of these novels, Bruno and Piero, have very different experiences of the Second World War, although they're both quite protected from it. Bruno moves away to live in a house in a very desolate area, and he's never quite sure what's going on because he's so naive and he's so innocent. Piero is a little bit smarter. He's living with Hitler, he's overhearing conversations that take place, and he's following the action of the war. Bruno never really takes part in it, he just watches from a distance, but Piero becomes very changed by it. So changed, in fact, that he becomes capable of some terrible and life-changing actions. The most important theme of this novel is brainwashing and how easy it is to change. I touched on this a little bit in The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas with Gretel, Bruno's older sister, who goes from being a very sweet girl to being indoctrinated simply because she has a crush on young Lieutenant Kotler. Kotler himself shows up in this book, but because it takes place a few years before, he's a member of the Hitler Youth, and Piero, when he meets him, is just as easily impressed by the uniform, by the authority that he holds, and he wants a little bit of that for himself. Uh, there's two moments in this book which are very important to me. The first is very early on, and it's the friendship that has formed since infancy between Piero and Anshul, who lives upstairs from him. A couple of years ago, I was doing a school event when a child asked me why I never featured any disabled characters in my books. And I took it to heart, thinking that that would be quite a, an interesting and challenging thing to do. Anshul is deaf, so all the conversations between Piero and Anshul are done through sign language, which was a challenge for me as a writer, but I think it adds to the book. And the second thing, the second moment that I, I, I like is the ending itself, which is quite sad and full of remorse and regret, but I think it leaves the reader thinking about their own actions in life. In the three novels I've written about war for young people, I've always kept the, the children at the centre of the story quite far removed from the action of the war itself. In this one I wanted to change that a little bit, because Piero of course lives with Hitler, He's indoctrinated by Hitler. He sees Hitler as something of a father figure to him. And really the brainwashing that goes on shows all young people how easy it is to change. I hope young readers who come to this book will realise how easy it is to lose sight of ourselves when we get caught up in events that are bigger than we could ever imagine. That's what happens to Piero in this book. He loses sight of who he is. He loses sight of his own decency and his own humanity, simply because he gets so impressed by the authority figure of Adolf Hitler. This novel is split into two halves. The first half is a complete work of imagination on my part. It follows Piero as he loses his parents, as he goes to an orphanage, and as he makes his way across Europe to the Berghof. All of that is a fiction. The second half of the book is slightly different. It takes place each chapter in a different year, but each chapter is, is based around something real that happened at the Berghof. So for example, there's the, vi the visit of the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, former Edward VIII and Mrs. Simpson, who come to meet Hitler, and there's been a lot of controversy about their potential Nazi leanings. 
Um, there's a chapter where the architects of one of the concentration camps comes to the Birkhoff to explain what's going to happen there. There's a chapter where Eva Braun has her 30th birthday, which also took place at the Birkhoff, and most of the important Nazi characters arrived there. So for each of those sections, I try to stick as close to the historical facts as possible, while still having a fictional character at the centre of them. Many thanks to all the teachers, schools and librarians who've supported my books over the years and have got them into the hands of young readers. I hope you find this one as interesting and challenging and entertaining as the previous ones and I'd love to know what you think of it.